Good everyone. I'm Ajit Jola Jesu Josiah, known as Josken. And together with me is Ayodili Sakuraya, a co-presenter from the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And uh, I'm a secondary school educator, while my co-presenter is a primary school educator from the private school. So let's go to the education sphere. Now, looking at Nigeria, Nigeria is just an official democratic secular country in West Africa with the slogan, the giant of Africa, and they got the independence in 1st October 1960. And then we have so many things that we share in common, but our population is ranging from 195.9 million. And that is 2018 estimates. We have 36 states and the federal capital is located in Abuja. And then we are 20 world largest economy. And uh, we have two major religions, which is Islamic and Korean religion. We have a major ethnic city, which is Hausa, Yoruba, Igbo. And uh, there are 250 groups of minor ethnic city. And uh, we have two major rivers in Nigeria, River Niger and Benue. And uh, they meet at Lokoja, which is called Confluence Town. And many other things like that. We have the tradition. Now, let me go back to Nigeria educational system. We have 6334, which have been collapsed to 934 system of education. And our education is divided into different classes. We have the kindergarten, we have the primary, which is known as basic education. We have the junior secondary school, senior and tertiary. So we want to quickly look at Nigerian primary schools education and the uh, in Nigerian school primary education, we call it universal basic education. And it is being controlled and championed by Universal Basic Education Commission. And uh, with, the primary, with the primary aim of making it free, basic, and compulsory. And it is divided into, two, into three basic education. We have the lower basic education, which is from primary one to three. We have the middle basic. We have the upper basic with the duration of nine years in school, six years in lower basic and middle basic, while the remaining three years is upper basic education. And the certificate obtained is school leaving certificate for primary ones to primary six, and why that of DSS ones to three, which is the first secondary school, is junior secondary school certificate. So when you look at the primary school curriculum in Nigeria, it is planned and developed by a body known as National Education Research and Development Council. And with the underlying emphasis of the Millennium Development Goals and education for all. And when you look at the subject for the lower basic education, which is from primary one to three, you have the subject mathematics and English, which is the core subject. And you are to take minimum of six and maximum of seven. But when you look at the middle basic, we have the same subject also. Now, looking at the upper basic is the same subject, but there's a slight difference. And you are being forced at least to do some religious values, basic and technology. There are underlying subjects under this core subject. We call them a core subject. We have basic science and technology. And they are being forced to take minimum of nine subjects. Now, Going to the teacher education in Nigeria, and primarily when you look at the qualification and the professional development. For qualification, initially, the basic primary school teacher qualification is NCE. Initially, it was teacher certificate grade two, which was later canceled and now bent on NCE. So NCE became the required diploma for all primary and junior secondary school teachers. And there are other academics and professional certificates, which you will see in the slide. So when you go through the looking at the professional development, just like what the person, the representative from the Indians have said, we have the formal setting and we have the uh, informal setting. When you look at the formal setting, it has to do with the conferences, attending courses, seminars, and workshops. We have the informal setting, which has to do with individual research. And we have what is called professional learning community, whereby you see teachers looking for their 
colleague that have the master in that particular topic and they sit together to see how they can put eggs together to ensure that a particular topic is taught and so that the students will understand it better. And we also have professional bodies which from time to time organizes seminars, workshops, conference and symposium. So my co-presenter will begin from where I stopped to tell us some of the approaches and some of the strategies. Over to you, Mr. Ayodili. Mr. Ayodili? Hello, Mr. Ayodili? Yes. My co-presenter, is it there? Is he Mr. Ayodili? Yes, yes, I'm checking if he's here. What's his, uh, his name is Zachary Yoro? Yes. No, 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 he's not here. He's not there. It's okay, let no. me continue. Yeah, continue, please. So, if he's not there, let me just share the screen. So, no, no. I'll begin by looking at the approach. We look at the approach in Nigeria, which many primary teachers do adopt to ensure that the right skill is passed to learners. So what are the right skills? We have the use of technology and we have teaching approach and strategy. Now a thousand teachers and a thousand methods looking at the teacher, uh, Chinese proverb. Teaching approach describes the set of principle, belief, or ideas about nature of learning, which is uh -huh. translated into the classroom. I hope you are seeing the... Yes. Yeah, excuse me, Joshua. I can see the, your co-presenter now, Mr. Zakaryu. Yeah. All right. Good afternoon, um, world. Okay. Good afternoon. All right. Good afternoon. So I'm going to be sharing my slides now. All right. Um, when we talk about Nigerian primary schools, we have basically two different forms of schools in Nigeria. All right. One of the schools is private and the other one is public schools all right so the public schools have its own reality while the private does have its own reality as well so regardless of whether you are in pr private or public something stand out for as a nigerian we have all our teaching approaches and our strategy one of the approaches that we always look at is subject matter approach time in memory basically our teachers are the lords they centralize every of their teaching on subject matter later based on research they felt okay they need to dominate their lessons so it became teacher dominated approach which is not good for the children so we end up looking at research based approach which is inquiry based for children to be an independent learner now around Nigeria, we now have a whole child approach, which is child-friendly and student-centered approach. So when you talk about teaching strategy, we have a whole lot of visualization, improvisation, cooperative learning, inquiry-based uh, instruction, differentiation where children's needs are met, technology in the classroom, and behavioral plans are always instituted to make children a better person. Professional development also is part of it. So when you talk about teaching with technology, it is now inclusive system fulfill each learner's potential. All children should learn from the same flexible, relevant, and accessible curriculum. Resources should be avoid stereotypes and omissions. Assessment should allow students to demonstrate learning in various ways. So how do we go about it? The new normal. We, even though we have technology in the past, but the outbreak of COVID-19 has made an influx of digital transformation. Now we have inequalities fed into the COVID-19 education crisis. 40% of poor countries, including Nigeria, has the two weeks of education. So now what we have in Nigeria basically is for us to have a school called post-COVID. So after in post-COVID era now, we have the use of Google Slide, we have Zoho, Pre Prezi, presentation for our presentation or use of technology. Also, we have creating digital learning material system contents such as Google Classroom, TED-Ed, EdPozu, Seesaw, and Magisto. 
Also, we went ahead to look at how well we can also assist in terms of video communication. We have Zoom, Hangouts, Meets, Teams, WeChat, creating instant messages for those poor children from disadvantaged families. We now use Facebook for them to teach. We use WhatsApp. We use Instagram. Also, we use Telegram. So when you look at the outbreak of COVID-19, generally, it has helped to enhance different use of technology. In terms of collecting evidences, assessment, we have myquiz.com, which is very predominant. Quizalis, we have a Google Form, we have a Factile to create and collect our facts. So talking about create, creating self-directed learning content, we have YouTube. British Council has been very helpful in Nigeria. We have Khan Academy, which is also self-directed learning. And finally, we have Madrasa for those children that fall in with between Arabic and English lessons. So um, thank you for listening and sharing your expertise and resources. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Zakariahu from Nigeria. So can you please stop sharing your screen? So briefly, okay, because we are running out of time, I'm going to give a, a short summary, a brief summary of what uh, you've just discussed. So it, you gave a good introduction on uh, the country, Nigeria itself, the culture, the food, the tradition, which was a very good introduction. The education system in Nigeria, the Nigerian primary schools. And also, uh, just like for India, you talk about the formal and informal setting, which was very well, de which was detailed. And what I like also about the difference between private school and public school, and also how you are uh, using innovative teaching strategies, using different technologies for teaching and learning as well as assessment. You're coping with, uh, you talk about the new normal as we are living in a VUCA world, which is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And your school, the private school uh, and the public school are mostly catering for these challenges in the new normal. Thank you very much.